Thank you all for coming. Another uh, effectively sold out house. Blinded by the light, I can't see any of you. So I would ask you all sorts of questions about how many of you have been before and how many of it's your first show, but I can't see any of you, even if I try. So we'll pass on that. But I want to talk about loss. Um, you know, I've had my differences with the title Lost Landscapes because I don't like to dwell on loss and because history may move uh, in retrograde, but in general it just moves forward and we can't go back. But we have lost a great deal in San Francisco. Um, we've lost much of our neighborhood feel, we've lost our working class communities, we've lost most of our African American community due to uh, displacement and gentrification. Um, and while we can't go back, this is a moment where we might at least start to think about how we can begin to get some something back, what we want, the city that we'd like to live in. So this is the uh, ethos behind Last Landscapes. As I know you've heard me say before, it isn't just about the past, it's also about the future. Think about the kind of city you'd like to live in, think about the kind of world you'd like to live in, and use these images as a guide. You, the audience, as always, are the soundtrack. I want you to identify people, places, and events that you recognize. I'd like you to ask questions of your neighbors and of me, although who knows. I'd like you to engage in spirited discussion and conflict with those around you. And I want you to have a great time. Thanks so much. So this is footage that comes to us through the courtesy of Gene Anderson. I believe this is um, some of his relatives. This, I think, was shot by the Nelson family. Correct me if I'm wrong, Gene. Yes, yes. Oh, I should explain. This is the um, key system train from Oakland to San Francisco on the lower deck of the bridge. Maximum 45 miles an hour. Definitely a better view. No worries about leakage. We're on the lower deck. Two decks for, uh, two lanes for trucks and then um, the trains. This uh, started in 1939 and ended in 58. My great-grandfather built that. There you go. Coming into the beautiful Transbay Terminal. Public or private? Uh, private. It's a long story, too. Ended up being part of the transit systems that were destroyed by the auto industry. First admission. All men are wearing caps. 1970s. No talking allowed.
This was shot off the screen in the 70s, and it's filled with moralizing and bad plots, but it's a great view of the city during time of change. Wait, they had drones back then? Drone. <laughs> Pacific Telephone Building in the background by itself. This is a theatrical feature film outtake, 35 millimeter nitrate negative, transferred at the Internet Archive. Notice the outdoor advertising. shot in the uh, 1951 or thereabouts. This is from the Jones family from Long Beach, California, about 1954, visiting the city. This film comes to us through the courtesy of Carrie Lytla, who's in the audience, I think. Unfortunately, or fortunately, fuzz in the film gate. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> so we're in the early mid, I think this is about 1934. It's uh, kind of the reverse of the famous Market Street film from 1906. But this is here to just um, let us revel in the detail. This film is an outtake from, well, it was shot for an unknown feature film. It might have been shot on spec by Hollywood camera people. I love the sign. That was um, Third Street. We just passed by the old Examiner building. Nineteen forty four or forty five on the roof downtown. You know, cable cars don't change very much, but they make great punctuation. But it was on Van Ness. Pure water. Sometime in the late 30s or very early 40s.
That's a glimpse of the Holtz family. We'll see more of them, and they're also here tonight. This, as some of you may remember, is an outtake from Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. <laughs> it is. Everybody looks so guilty. <laughs> so, so furtive. So this is a, a, a Rockefeller visiting um, when he's running for president in 68. And um, I'm showing this because he's got the Berkeley barb. This is about 1914 on the Barbary Coast, Jackson Street. Uh, we don't know much, if anything, about this clip. If any of you have any ideas, please get in touch who these people might be. Some of them are obviously performers. Right. Now, this footage may have had something to do with a Purcell's Cafe, founded by Lou Purcell and Sam King, former Pullman porters, at first called a different club at 520 Pacific. Um, Purcell's was called a black and tan club because uh, uh, both black and white people were welcome as patrons, and it was also a taxi dance place where you would buy a token and dance with um, a woman. I believe that was invented in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Under construction. Don't get too nostalgic. So this is 1914, and I'm um, led by the, the Treasury Department and the California Department of, uh, I gotta get this right, um, State Board of Pharmacy. They're burning opium and paraphernalia on the street. There had, been, there had been a drug war going on for many, many years. And it was, um, many people welcomed the earthquake because it leveled the Chinese opium dens. And there's a feeling that comes out of, you know, really colonialism that it was good, that it was better if people prevented Chinese people from using opium. So in a sense, it was a drug war that was an, uh, kind of an excuse to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to play upon and, and control um, this community. But interestingly enough, in um, the Pacific Pharmacist at the time, it said, it is much to be regretted 
that smoking opium must be destroyed as it seems a wanton waste. It's also a pity that the opium pipes are all destroyed. They could make interesting museum exhibits. Um, but they staged this for the newsreel cameras in 1914. This is a civic center. That's right. <laughs> Feature outtake. I have no context for this. <laughs> this is um, also from the Nelson family. I believe it's around 1938. And I think that they're um, raising money, possibly for um, uh, Chinese war relief in the war against Japan. Unlike many history projects, this project begins with the material, it begins with the footage, and then we have to figure out as much as we can about what it means, where it's from, what's happening. I think they're raising money for war relief here. I could be mistaken. Anybody translate? You see, there's uh, Japanese businesses in Chinatown at the time. <laughs> this is footage from a family in um, in Berkeley that kind of saw themselves as news people because they recorded a lot of historical events that took place around them. Some tourist home movies from right around the same time, a little later, 1939. Save a Life Dance. Maybe this is uh, early World War II, actually. You know how you tell World War II footage, right? You see the ration stickers in the windshield, the gas rationing stickers. We'll see some. the 50s, Grant Avenue. <laughs> so, remember the existential running man? 
Many of you have seen this man before. <laughs> For a long time, we didn't know what he was running from <laughs> or where he was running to. And now I'm happy to say that because of new uh, discoveries in the Internet Archives footage library, we can actually present a little more of this existential man's, existential hero's story. So here goes. So then he runs up the hill, looking behind him. We don't know what movie this is from. Maybe one of you movie buffs can solve this problem. Ask Eddie Muller. I thought she said, that is Eddie Muller, but no. <laughs> Let's ask Eddie. OK, that clip we've seen, but this we haven't. He was running for the cable car. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> and then the rest is veiled in history. Maybe he's the, in that elevator going up that we saw a little while ago. And this looks like a background process plate, but it's not. This is wartime driving around in San Francisco. It's a family named Panfili. Um, lived, I think, in El Cerrito. And they shot some really beautiful stuff. Heading down uh, Broadway, I think, to the, to the water. And this is um, the waterfront during, uh, it says on the can, the 1934 strike, but I think it's the 36 strike. And you see ships idled, men hanging around, sheds on the waterfront, um, striking workers. I think this is the 36 uh, waterfront strike. It could be 34. We'll have to do some more research. Back when San Francisco was a, uh, you know, a total uh, maritime town, these, um, the uh, place where workers are sheltering. Um, these strikes really cut at the heart of the economy. Here's trucks waiting because of um, uh, picket lines to unload. Again, around 36. This is now South Beach. There's a key system train going over the bridge. Also South Beach, and I miss the 76 Union clock. It was a little dangerous to set your watch by it, but it was great. Red's Java House and Tony's. Now I think we go to photo galleries and get our WordPress support from those peers. The Embarcadero Freeway. Isn't that beautiful? Back when the ferry building housed the World Trade Center, our World Trade Center. We have a schedule in the library, regular service to SFO and Oakland airports. And um, those of you who've seen this know that you've got to hang on to your seats.
That was an outtake from the lineup in 1957. Is there Aquatic Park? Uh, late 40s or early 50s, it, it appears. Ah, right. Yep. Yes, we have footage of them playing in the 70s as well. Probably not the same guys. Take your daughter to work. <laughs> Underground newspapers for sale. So this is um, 1939, lots of uh, smoky fairies. Now watch carefully the, uh, the, the cyclone fence there, because in a minute we're going to see a worker. Starting to hang the cables. Remember this if you ever have to build a bridge. <laughs> and the bridge is um, very soon to open, it's a week or two away. And our family from the East Bay, courtesy of, of Gene Anderson, um, is, is on the bridge watching it get paved. There's a remarkable amount of home movies shot by people who managed to get onto the bridges while they were being built. Uh, it's kind of like it was almost open, but it, I mean, it wasn't. But I guess the workers had a lot of family and friends. Tightening the, jo the uh, joints around the cable. That cable, you can see all the individual strands. That's what you trust your life to. <laughs> this is what you're looking down at. And this is a little later in the day, on opening day of the Bay Bridge. The ceremonies are over and the traffic jams are done. Um, so our family from the East Bay decides to go across to San Francisco. 
I don't know, what kind of car is that? Man sitting in the rumble seat. Sightseers watching the tolls get taken. Notice the two-way traffic. No, a couple years later. That's what I like. People coming back. They missed their ride back. And a little bit of uh, Rinkin Hill. There's Guy Place in the background. That's my, my sister friend, honorary brother from Guy Place. Yeah, cheering. And uh, one of really our favorite clips from 1978. Remember this? This was when um, New Year's Eve, workers would throw their old desk calendars out the window. And when... Um, When uh, Robert Redford was shooting his movie, The Candidate, they shot on this day so as to get a free ticker tape parade. <laughs> now building windows don't open. That's right, it's not snow, it's paper. Here's the dude who has to clean it up. City sent one man. <laughs> These are outtakes from a film made in 1953 called No Escape, a low budget feature. There's the telenews that showed newsreels and, and, and uh, news footage. Watch the traffic light carefully. Some, um... Glamour images of the Civic Center during the war, World War II. the beloved Fox Theater, now the Fox Plaza. So these films come from the Holtz family um, through the courtesy of Adina Rauschberger, who's in the audience, I think, with her mother, Barbara Holtz. <laughs> the uh, relatively new federal building and the relatively old state building. And the famous building at 8th and Market, built on the site of the old uh, vegetable market. Or is that 7th and Market? Where is that? 8th and Market. All right. We are, it's July 12, 1964. And um, 40,000 people are marching down uh, Market to uh, protest the selection of Senator Barry Goldwater as the Republican nominee. This is a civil rights march. Um, Shot by the Holtz family. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, it's a march for civil rights and for human rights. And um, culminating at the hotel where I think a lot of delegates were staying. I like this shot that's coming up, though. Not that one. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Here's some footage of the Haight-Ashbury, um, shot by a travel filmmaker from the Michigan Automobile Club in 1966 or 7. Ready for anything. And now it's the early 50s, and we're going to be visiting with the family from the Portola District off of San Bruno Avenue with modern conveniences like the electric cigarette lighter. <laughs> um, this, is, uh, this is the San Bruno Avenue off-ramp of, of 101. I, this is a very beautiful family, and if... Uh, anybody ever can help us figure out who they are, I'd love for them to get their movies back. These came from, uh, on eBay from someplace in Oregon. Their daughter is um, having a ceremony today. And now we're home, there's the movie screen. <laughs> this is, um, I believe, Sylvia's birthday. Time for coffee with your cake. It's homogenized. And a few shots of their kitchen getting ready for Thanksgiving. This is a, among my favorite to see.
Yeah, that's a good thought. Um, I know a little more about that. You know, um, I originally thought it was late 40s, but I think it's early 50s, 51 to 53 is my guess. Now opening up presents. This is another family with uh, maybe not so great a house, but an amazing view. I feel like this is around maybe 14th Avenue in the sunset. Um, and I don't know where this is, but I, I just love these interiors. This is a, a filmmaker, you know, so all his, uh, his, I'm assuming I shouldn't. Um, there's a lot of great sort of geeky accessories. Some Kodak boxes. This could be Bernal Heights from The View. Huh. Yeah, this is different from the other. So um, our East Bay family is visiting Treasure Island, but the fair is under construction, and it's still naked landfill. This is kind of a future-oriented piece of footage as we contemplate a new high-rise community on Treasure Island. That's one of the hangars that still exists. A few years before this was, um, well, really even a year before this was just, um, you know, mud uh, with protected by a berm of some sort. It's not even dry at this point. Where did the mud come from? 
Who knows? Where did the, the landfill for Treasure Island come from? From where? Dredge. Dredge from the bay. And the ferry leaves to go back. Um, brief images of the Labor Day Parade from 1938. We've seen some of these in the past, and so I'm focusing just on a few of the kind of um, interesting. Uh, the Musicians' Union, our family in the East Bay were performers. Here's one of our musicians. <laughs> Skywriting for Labor Day. Let's bring that back. The Actors' Union. Yeah, right. The Bartenders Union. <laughs> Bottled service. The, um, the Makeup Union to keep my lady beautiful. I, the makeup artists, I don't know who they are. Um, this was a Mooney Billings, the Freedom of the Labor Martyrs and KYA's labor programming. Beautiful 30s graphics. Uh huh. That's a union as well, though. Um, the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, local ten, local one dash ten, the first one that played a big role in bringing us the middle class in America. And then this rather odd um, men with flags. <laughs> and women with flags. <laughs> and this is the American Guild of Variety Artists. Wow. <laughs> Pictures say it all. <laughs> Quite a variety of <laughs> roles there. <laughs> the, uh, the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, these are union maids. And of course, beer brings, beer creates prosperity. <laughs> and then, nice. you're so sophisticated. Finishing up at the shaving parlor. <laughs> now, um, Douglas Corrigan, also known as Wrongway Corrigan, visited San Francisco. Remember, he's the guy that flew from the West Coast to New York and then filed a flight plan to go back, but instead flew to Ireland and said that he really didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> and through, for the rest of his life, he never admitted that it was a, what he did. So he became kind of an anti hero, cultural hero. He's wearing the same leather jacket um, that he flew in, and the, the title is an allusion to the fact that Lindbergh never acknowledged his achievement. But you see he's getting mobbed here on Market Street. With He put a, a mortar board on him. And this is the scrap metal demonstration, the boycott of um, Chinese, uh, um, Chinese community groups, United Chinese Societies, trying to get a boycott going against shipping scrap metal to Japan to be used in the war against China. This is, um, and here is more footage from our friends, the Panfilly family. This is World War II, and they're about to go on the bridge, and the only reason I'm showing this is because it's another one of these great transgressive home movies. Watch the sign on the right carefully that says the taking of photographs from bridge is prohibited. And of course, they're shooting, you know, the, the battleship, so. Um, is that patriotic or what? I don't know anything about this family, but um, they're a Sunset family, I think. Um, and uh, like one of my holy grails I always love is when I see um, houses in the sunset next to um, empty lots or next to dunes, sometimes planted over, sometimes not. There's a tiny bit of that here before all the spaces were, were filled in. Uh, ultimately in the 70s, so 
Yeah, that's um, natives, probably native San Francisco grass, and um, their family somewhere a little further in town with a newborn. This is in the 30s, 38, 39. That was, um, comes from the Lavelle family. There's about six Lavelles in the audience tonight. And now we're in the Richmond district. This is 25th near Balboa. And here we are at Geary and Parker in the late 50s, early 60s. This is the Pioneer Scooter Club. Um, this was a famous scooter club. It was in Life magazine. Uh, and they actually kind of like, I don't want to say like critical mass, but they fought for scooters' rights. <laughs> um, this is the Lynn Wall Vespa dealer, as I said, at Geary and Parker. Um, so there's some beauty shots. Uh, and then there's this one guy who we're going to see who is a big wheel in the Pioneer Scooter Club, who I think was named Warren Carver. We'll see Warren in just a moment. Um, but. Uh, the Pioneer Scooter Club actually, you know, they did, they rode onto the bridges and they rode around town and they engaged in demonstrations for safe um, uh, scooter lanes and for parking. Uh, we'll see a little more of that in a minute when they start riding, but right now these are these sort of hipsters of their time, I guess. <laughs> Hidden stories of the Richmond. That might be Mr. Wall. There's the coronet in the background, I think. Famous uh, movie theater. Star Wars premiered. <laughs> this guy may be Warren Carver. See, there's sort of, or this guy. There's just the vaguest, vaguest sense of outlawness around this crowd. <laughs> Very refined. Balloons and all. Sideshow of the 60s. That's right. Get that angle just right. Right, so there's this council for <laughs> safe scooter parking. I haven't really done the research yet, you know, whether there were, whether there were any arrests or anything. But you see, there's, there's some, uh, look at all the people out there. <laughs> This is like maybe McAllister or something? I don't know. Well, if you Google it, you get the feeling that it was, there was, but I think San Francisco, the pioneers were um, kind of a vanguard. Here we are by the Opera House, I think. Kind of uh, regrouping. Okay, so I notice on Friday that What's Up Doc is playing at DeCastro. <laughs> Here it is being shot at 23rd and Balboa. These, um, again, are Holtz family movies. Thank you so much for this. This is a scene which I gather is sort of meant to be a parody of Bullet, you know, with the chases up and down the hills. And it, apparently it's kind of intricate. It took quite a while to shoot. Um, the actors look just a bit burned out. But we've rarely seen such excitement in the... <laughs> so this is Barbara Streisand and Ryan O'Neill. Remake for, of, of uh, Bringing Up Baby, directed by Peter Bogdanovich.
And this is 1972, I, sh I should say. Yeah, right, that's Bogdanovich. The old D. Young, the old uh, Academy of Sciences. And here's our animal sequence. A little, some calves. Bison taking bath. There are reasons why we no longer do this. <laughs> I wonder if, it, would, uh, would uh, uh, the Holtz family be able to explain what's happening here? Man in his boat. Come closer. Now I want you to look closely at what she takes out of her purse. Film. See the ration sticker, by the way, on the right? Ocean Beach before the sand pushed up against the playland. Our amusement park that closed in 1972. Somebody want to explain the water line, the, in, the water intake? Right. <laughs> I call this image patience. <laughs> Do you know what airship that is? I don't. It, whether it's, uh, I think it's military. It doesn't say Goodyear. It's probably, yeah, the Macon at, at Moffett Field. This is our family from the Portola celebrating at the beach. Portola, that's right. I know, I'm not a native. Thank you.
This is Sutro's, the uh, successor to Sutro Baths. Inside. Outtakes from the movie The Lineup in 1957. The uh, Sky Tram behind the uh, Sutro Baths. Great Highway. The uh, gas station, now gone, right by uh, up by where um, the um, Seal Rocks Motel is across the street. Seal Rocks Inn. <laughs> Some picnicking. And um, these are uh, Holtz children um, riding the rides at Playland. And this is just sort of a survey of some of the kid-friendly attractions at Playland. The coffee shop. Twenty cents. You know what they say about how San Franciscans used to dress quite formally. And Fleischhacker Pool in the last, this is about 1951 actually. And now it's November 
15, 1969. And this is the San Francisco moratorium, the big anti-war march. There were marches held all over the United States. San Francisco, I think there were 50,000. And this is footage that comes to us through the courtesy of Star Sutherland, um, veteran producer and artist. Third Street right there. And this, uh, what's wonderful about this footage, which was shot on Super 8, I think, is that it's a, um, an incredible view of just the faces of people who, who came out against the war in 1969. So this was a march from downtown through the Richmond and then into the park, kind of the canonical route. And this is um, General Hershey Barr, I, who was a, uh, a, a performance artist and from LA, uh, who would show up at all the demos. I'm forgetting his real name. There's a lot about him online. We just recently found a film he made in Los Angeles, which is an amazing collage film, which we're gonna um, give to the world shortly. Geary. Many, many tens of thousands of people, some solidarity in the Richmond district. the poster. flag with a peace symbol. Helium balloons being... This was the age of um, somewhat, sometimes chaotic verite. Yeah. And that was the weekend, and then it's Monday, and people go back to work. This is actually a few years later, in the very early 70s, after BART opened up.
one of the downtown stations. And then the far west side of San Francisco is the Farallones, located in District 1. Um, not a lot of people, but many hundreds of thousands of birds and sea lions and seals and sharks. And this is where we end on the far west of the city. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you next year. Thank you, Rick. Uh, two major announcements before you go. One is that all the members should come up on stage for the member photo. The other one is that all major news organizations have called it for Jones in Alabama.